It's me, Renee. I'm back. So next week is Eurovision. Well, the semi-panel starts next Tuesday, and then on Thursday, second semi-panel, and then next Saturday, it's Eurovision time! The big final! And yeah, if you have paid attention, or if you maybe have noticed, I've done some videos focusing on different songs from Eurovision, and then connecting books to them. I have two more songs that I kind of want to talk about, uh, but since Eurovision, it's Starting or starting so soon since Eurovision of Fun is ending on Monday and uh, the Euro Eurovision is officially well, the summer finals are officially starting on Tuesday. I'm gonna do two songs in one video. Two songs, two songs, one video. So, yeah, uh, also, I would say actually a few of these books actually can work for both uh, songs, so that's kind of fitting, you know, cool. Uh, but yeah, first I'm gonna do Machas, which is the Maltese uh, song. So it's kind of funny. The song title is in French, but the song itself is in English. Kind of weird in a way. But it's a very cool song. I suppose it's kind of about, at least how I think it's about like being yourself. Not playing to others' expectations of who, who you should be, but be just who you are. And just kind of giving Fs about everyone else and doing your yourself completely, 100%. And for one of these, well, for one of these books I'm going to talk about is Truly Madly Royally by Debbie Rogo. I've talked about this one before. It's a YA contemporary uh, with uh, interracial, uh, interracial romance. And Sora, that's her. She's the protagonist, and she meets Owen, this guy, who's a prince, of course, of an invented country that's supposed to be close to the UK, so like a UK rival in a way, or like a UK-friendly country, like in that area. And yeah, sparks fly. But the thing with Sora is because, okay, so they meet during the summer. Sora's taking a class at a college in New Jersey, which uh, gives like community college or kind of volunteering and yeah, very good, um, very good courses for what she wants to do because usually she volunteers a lot and she wants to kind of work on that and be better with that. So it's kind of, it gives her a courses on economy and how to organize and stuff like that. But uh, this school is a kind of rich school. So most of the other people who go to school are kind of like, snobby upper class like yo it's we're too good for you we just look down on you no no so uh sora she's kind of like well very much underdog and then in the beginning she's kind of in a way ostracized but it's also like she's too shy to kind of get to know the other people after a while she realized okay not everyone's a snob here uh but yeah she, it's very much but in a way very much her doing her own thing even though the world wants her to stop because it's she has to fight for opportunities and fight for her rights in a way. So yeah, this one. Uh, though I would say in a way it also works with other book, other, other movie, other song. And I'm gonna mention how when I talk about that song. Of course I'm gonna link the song down below. And then we have The Fixer by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the first in duology. And uh, this one thinks Scandal meets Veronica Marsh. It's about a teen. She moves to Washington, D.C. and she becomes a fixer. Or she, yeah, she kind of fixes people's problems. And she, it's kind of like on a high school level because she's a teen. But so this stuff that's happening in like high school levels, but there's also political drama like around because her sister, she lives with her sister now and her sister is working at White House in politics and big drama around that and uh, yeah a lot of people could say like say like oh Tess why are you doing things so difficult because she's she kind of she knows what she wants to do and she has sass and she has self-confidence and she does her own thing people say like well you shouldn't mess around where you don't belong in. You should just sit still because you're female. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't rough the cage. That's not a word. You shouldn't, um, 
yeah, you shouldn't do the stuff like you do. And she's like, nope, I'm gonna do it anyway. And yeah, it's just an amazing read. If you love Veronica Marsh, definitely check this one out. And then we have The Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl by Fyodorogos. This is the last in trilogy. Uh, and this is kind of one of the times where I kind of, in a way, recommend the whole trilogy. Obviously. Well, when would you recommend just this last book in the trilogy? I guess you wouldn't really. Sometimes the first book is worse, but still you would really recommend all the books. Anyway, so this is about... Um, uh, females, a girl, a girl, a gang of females in the 1800s, late 1800s, who solve mystery. But uh, there's a twist. So it's Mr. Jekyll's uh, two daughters, no, Mr. Jekyll's daughter and Mr. Hyde's daughter uh, and Dr. Hyde's daughter. Yes, they're kind of different. And yeah, they're both kind of different. You have Frankenstein's wife or ex wife. You have also. Uh, Catherine uh, Thoreau. No, that's not Thoreau. That's the name of the author. Uh, but like, yeah. So you have all these different Gothic experiences, uh, Gothic classic stories, like from the female point of views. And also Sherlock Holmes has a kind of, as was in this one, is kind of has a big role. And yeah, and of course, it's females in 1800s, so everyone's against them. Some of them are Suffolk, and yeah, that doesn't make it easier, and uh, yeah, but they they go their own way and say, F you idiots, and do their stuff. So yeah, check it out. Then we have, <coughs> sorry, uh, then we have, um, yeah, not completely. So, uh, am I gonna move to the next song, or am I... Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna use this one. A Secret Fire by C.J. Doherty and Karina Rosenfeld. This is the first... Yeah, first anthology. So, two books. And it's a uh, dual point of view. One of them is Taylor Montclair, who's a... Uh, British girl, and then you have uh, Sasha, who's a French guy, and um, they meet, and stuff happens. I actually don't remember if they become uh, lovers, but you know that, yeah, they're, they're the two main characters, and Sasha, he's kind of like, he's pro prophesied to not be able to die. Well, he's supposed to die when he turns 18. Before that, he can kind of die how many times he wants and like he can fall down from a tall building and he'll survive but it's not a vampire it's more like a curse thingy and yeah so this book has secret societies and magic and alchemy and cool stuff like that and yeah it's just very much about being yourself and not caring what anyone else thinks in a way <clears throat> And then let's move on to the next song, which is the Danish song. So for once, actually, the Danes have decided to use a song in Danish. I think, as well, most of you, as a lot of you know, us Canadians, we speak English pretty well. I mean, we were very famous for how our well knowledge of, knowledge of English. How often, at least in Norway, I can't speak for Sweden or Denmark, but at least in Norway, most, I would say, like, 80% 80 of the musicians sing in English, even though they're Norwegian singers. So, of course, they know Norwegian perfectly. Uh, but yeah, they kind of have do English more often. Though, lately, lately, you've had some people who do it in Norwegian, but it's not that many in, like, the grand scheme of things. Uh, but still, singing in Norwegian in the... Uh, Eurovision Song Contest, contest has not really been done, or at least not in a long time. We won a Norwegian song in 85, but since that we haven't really, I don't think we have done anything in Norwegian since then. So the Danes doing a song in Danish is kind of cool. It's also, it's not um, a very like, their song is not very, it's not too 
it's not too soft. It's not too melodic. It's like it's kind of like pop in a way. It's got very 80s vibes. So I suppose you could like like the vibes of the song without understanding the song of the lyrics and the lyrics. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> the song is kind of as I said, 80s vibes, kind of like a bit like disco-ish, and it's about it's called Love Pohinan, which <laughs> means uh, translated it means practice on each other. So at first sight, it kind of sounds a bit sexual. It's not that. It's kind of more like being together and getting to know each other. Though that was it could be sexual as well. Like it's kind of it's meant to more like going and then also seeing like how they go to dance floor and dance together and kind of test how the good they are dancing with each other. Even though that's kind of weird because their style and like they're saying like let's go disco. Well, I'm pretty sure disco you don't need to like it's um disco was kind of a time when dance started to become like a one person thing. You didn't really disco is not something you need a partner to do. Waltz, you need a partner to do, or you need a partner to do the fox trot. But a disco, you can perfectly well do yourself. So that way, you don't really need help to do it. But yeah, um, so with this uh, recommendations books, I'm going to go with books where people are doing stuff they... they sorry. Oi. I just felt a bit queasy there. I thought maybe it was fine, but yeah, okay, I'm pretty good. Oh, okay, it's over now. Uh, but yeah, so for this, I'm gonna use books where the characters are trying something new. Uh, it's like meeting a new, new challenge and stuff like that. First, I'm gonna go with Dreaming, Ast Dreaming Anastasia by Dr Joy Pebble. I don't actually think I've talked about this in forever. I probably have talked about it sometime, but I think it's been quite a while to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, this is, as you might uh, imagine, a YA retelling of Anastasia Romanov. In this one, you have uh, both like the uh, the past of Anastasia Romanov, so you get kind of like the uh, the point of view of Anastasia Romanov, but you also get uh, just a little check, blah blah blah. You also get Anne Michelson in present day US. So you have both perspective, and for some time, that's how it is. But then, kind of according to this book, there's a twist, and yeah, it's quite interesting twist. And yeah, I just I love this book, I love this series. As a lot of people, I really love Anastasia's 20th Century Fox now Disney movie. So like, anytime this Anastasia Romanov retelling, telling, I'm like, oh cool. And yeah, this is just highly recommended. Also, also, if you're looking for a book with a love interest, it's not puffy, but cinnamon rolly and just sweet in the YA uh, territory, check out this book. The love interest in it is just oh, so, so cute and endearing. So cute. Not arrogant at all. And he's, yeah, he's the best. He's the best. Then we have The Shambling, a Shambling Guide to New York City. Uh, by Merle Lafferty. This is the first in the series. It was supposed to be a long series, but it didn't sell, sadly. So at the moment, it's just two books. Maybe sometime in the future, people decide to buy all of the books that the publisher has, and maybe she ends up writing a third one. Maybe she ends up writing a third one herself. Cross my fingers. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, it's just two books. And it's uh, actually, well, it's a uh, adult, not YA, adult, uh, urban fantasy. There's romance, but it's not main focus. Main focus is kind of more like, okay, so this is the protagonist, she's Zoe, and she kind of stumbles into this uh, supernatural underworld in New York City, and then she kind of becomes this human pet, in a way, in this um, newspaper that's mainly uh, catering to a Supernatural world and all the people who work in there are vampires, face, etc. And yeah, it's just a very cool book. And yeah, it's her first meeting meeting with all these people, so definitely works. Check it out. And then we have Hexed by Michelle Krish. 
so in this book, well, this is the first in duology, and early on in this book, something huge happens, and because of that, she discovers that she's actually a witch, she didn't know before this book, well, before the ones that happened, and so she kind of has to have has to learn to how to how to be a witch and how to control her powers and stuff like that, as well as being a teen. And yeah, this is actually quite rare in a way for me because this book I love it, uh, but quite early on there's some scenes where like you need like ten thousand pillows in front of your head because it's scary as f so. Freaking scary. So you need to read it in the daytime when it's light. If you're not, at least if you're me, if you're a scary cat like me, if you'd like to be scared, read it in the dark of the night at the at the graveyard. That's up to you. I wouldn't go for there, but that's up to you. You're warned. It's scary as hell sometimes. So so scary. But yeah, and then we have. Queer as a five dollar bill by Lee Wind. This is about a teen who who he discovers quite soon that he's gay, but like takes a while before before he goes out of the closet. But he soon discovers that maybe Abraham Lincoln was gay as well, or at least bisexual, because he finds some letters that uh, Abraham Lincoln wrote, and then he starts to write a school paper uh, regarding this. But because of him living in a small town, this becomes a big to-do, which is just a joke because one, being gay or bisexual is not bad, or like queer in a way is not bad at all, and B, so what if he had a different um, sexuality than you for first thought? I mean, he was still a president. It doesn't take away from his presidential uh, accomplishments at all. So, I mean... It's his personal life, so I don't understand that at all. But yeah, anyway, it's it shouldn't really matter. And if it matters, it shouldn't be a bad thing because being gay or bisexual is bad, not bad at all. Uh, but yeah, so this book, it's quite good. Well, yeah, quite good. Not amazing, but yeah, worth the read. Also, yeah, in case you're wondering, uh, the thing about Abraham Lincoln having... Maybe being uh, hom um, homosexual or bi, that's not made up. That's actually real life history. It's just not well known. So you can see the receipts uh, from that at the end of the book. So, yeah. Uh, let me check. I think it's over most. And yeah. Also, truly, madly, royally, in this one, again, it's the first time she goes to the school, so she meets these people. So it's kind of like. Being a fish out of water in that way, it's her. Well, it's yeah. I would say more or less is her first love. She's had flirtings before, but it's not like she hasn't really had a big love story before. So it's her first love story, and uh, yeah. So it's kind of and they're both kind of a bit scared, and they kind of it takes slowly. Like this book, actually, if you kind of want a romance, but it's slow. Like why romance are slow? Check out this because. Even though you know quite soon they won't, like, they interested in each, other, in each other, they actually don't kiss before, like, maybe a quarter, maybe halfway into the book. So it's very slow. But it's just still done so, so well. I just love it so much. And, um, yeah, that's it. If you have any thoughts on any of these books, if you have any thoughts on any songs, if you want to check out those, or any anything else, just let me know and talk to me in the comments. And bye!